Life's full of ups and downs, but sometimes it's nice to just kick back and talk about fountain pens. Yep. Welcome to FPGeeks.com. And now for your fountain pen enthusiast hosts, here's Dan and Eric. Gentlemen. This is Fountain Pen Geeks Podcast, episode number 15 for Tuesday, March 6th. We are recording live on Sunday, March 4th, 2012. Ladies and gentlemen, your prayers have been answered. Your dreams have come true and the heavens have opened. This is Fountain Pen Radio. I am Eric. I'm Dan. Dan, how are you today? I'm fantastic. How about I'm yourself? Great. It is sunny here in Southern California. It was 82 at the beaches today. It was like... 30 here and snowing. It was gorgeous. Who's that next to you? I can barely see down there. Where? In the video screen. To your right. <laughs> Over here? Who, no, who is that? that's me. Point the other way. There you go. <laughs> that looks, the face looks familiar. The face rings a bell. <laughs> is, is it um, George or... Um, no, that's not right. Uh, Gary? Gary. Is it? Or Gary Brett? Gary Bryanson, isn't it? Brian. Oh, Brian. I think it's Brian. Why don't you introduce yourself, sir? How are you guys Good, doing? How are you? At, at, at one point, I didn't know if you were referring to Dan's wife in the background or not. <laughs> and I, I thought, well, okay, I'll just follow along. But you realize that this is the second time that I have bombed your podcast. Once was an audio bomb about two weeks ago. I just jumped in. Thanks for having me. And tonight I'm going to video bomb the, the podcast. Is that all right? Now this is the third time, Mr. Gray. You've lost count. Is it yes. the third? If, if you recall, you, you jumped into our screen at our first live broadcast from the lobby at the L.A. Penn Show. Uh, you, yep, you're correct. And that I actually didn't that. turn into a podcast, but you were there, and many people are witnesses. If only that was recorded, too. Not to bring up anything <laughs> painful, but... And also, you know what I really planned on doing was to sneak behind the couch so that you guys wouldn't even know that I was there. And then I was just gonna, I was just gonna like peek up my head and do, you know, like rabbit ears and all that. But the couches were too close to the to the wall behind you, so I couldn't sneak up the way that well, I wanted Mr. Gray, to. But that would have been. You're not bad. dealing with amateurs. We actually thought ahead of time and said, now someone's gonna come sneak up behind us. So we planted ourselves yeah, right there, and because we, we knew you'd be the one. You are you are from the brass <laughs> section, after all. That's true. I, I know you, true. you're only second only. Let's see, in in rambunctiousness to the percussion section. <laughs> I don't have a clue. Oh, no, we're talking about, about band. And... I got my degree in trumpet performance of all things, so I'm actually uh, in a previous life a trumpet player. I still play some here, but not not nearly as much as I would like to. Um, Dan, did you tell me what the weather is in Ankeny? Yeah, I said it was like 30 and snowing. Uh, how much snow you got? Oh, only a couple of inches. And Brian? Milan. We had a, li we had a very light dusting of snow today. Um, the, it's probably like, you know, around freezing right now. But during the day, it's getting up to about 40, I suppose. It's really not that bad. And our, our entire winter here has been ridiculously mild. It really has been amazingly warm. And I'm not exaggerating. I have operated my grill more than I have my snowblower uh, this winter. And that's unusual. That's very strange for Ohio. Usually we've got, you know, school closings and all this. We've only had one significant snow so far. Yes, I just, I cannot relate to yeah, this. Yeah, our winter's been really mild. It's, it's depressing. Yeah. Oh, it's depressing for you? It is. Yeah. You like the snow, don't you? I like, I like snow. You both yeah. like the snow. Absolutely. Uh, we might as well make the announcement right now that this is our maiden voyage uh, when it comes to... Uh, is it our maiden voyage? We've done video before. Well, but not live. Well, we did live once, and we forgot to click the record button. Well, true. I have a huge green sign in my face that says we are live and recording. So this awesome. should be recording. I, I really have no other way of verifying that except for that sign. You know, we... We might as well ask people, and they can respond in the chat, is video and audio sounding good? Is everything uh, as it should I'm be? I'm not looking at chat. Um, I, I am, so well, I'll let you know so as soon as uh, someone answers and lets us is, know. If, if, is uh, there an audience in the chat room? We got pretty good. Yep, we got 15, pretty good. 15,732 people in the chat room? Absolutely. All right. Then we should get this show on the road. Um... <laughs> See, I'm doing the producing here, so I have to change our video screen from time to time, and I just change to the next topic, which I'm going to throw to you, Mr. Smith. 
Um, yeah, iTunes. We are now up to 34 ratings. Thank you guys for, for going there and rating us. And also Geek of the Week, we're now up to eight. So a few people have stopped by there. Um, there's also a new Fountain Pen podcast in town. Um, I wasn't aware of this till our Geek of the Week interview, but uh, Tyler Dahl is now doing his own podcast. Tyler Dahl has his own podcast. He's up to episode three already. Unbelievable. So I'm, I'm ecstatic. I want 100 Fountain Pen related podcasts out there in iTunes. Yeah, we just need to take it over. Yeah, it should be the the vast majority of all podcasts should be regarding fountain pens. I haven't listened to Tyler's podcast yet, but actually, last week on Friday, he and I were on the phone for about an hour and a half, if not about two hours. Had a great conversation. I got to know him um, pretty well. I, I really didn't know him very much at all before that, and we called up and exchanged some ideas on nib tuning, and, and he was kind of picking my brain on some things, and I was picking uh, his brain on some things. I did listen to about half of the podcast that you, that you guys did with him. Um, really interesting guy, and uh, I can't, I'm sure he's going to take the scene by storm here as well, uh, and I think he's already pretty busy with repairs, so pretty exciting to, to hear that podcast, and also it was really nice to talk to him and get to know a little bit more about what he does. Uh, yeah, a lot of people really seem uh, to know who he is. I, you know, I haven't had a chance to listen to uh, his Geek of the Week yet. We've been just so busy at work and stuff, but uh, really looking forward to that and, and finding out more about him. He, he's a, a, a very nice young man, and I'm calling him the future of pen repair. We need uh, him to keep going at it, and he needs to get you know, some of his peers brought on board, too. That actually was part of our discussion on Friday as I had a chat with him just talking about how, you know, some of the some of the most prevalent pen repair slash nib guys are getting up into their sixties and and, and uh and, and it's you know, they won't be on the scene uh maybe ten years from now and we all know that Richard Bender is slowing down a lot. So that's a lot of what our conversation was about, was trying to, um, you know, figure out how he would fit into this. And part of it might be, you know, getting some um, tips from some of those guys as well. What I found interesting about Tyler, uh, in, in case you haven't heard the, the interview yet, uh, he is currently 17. He will be 18 at the end of March. And when I asked him what he wanted to do with his life as far as career, he didn't even hesitate. He wants to do pen repair and be a nibmeister as long as people keep sending him pens. That's well, you know, I, I wish I would have found fountain pens at that age. I mean, not only could I imagine, you know, how large my collection would be, <laughs> but just, uh, you know, how many more repairs exactly that, you know, that I'd be doing as well. So I can certainly relate to him. Right. It was, uh, I actually have, talking about Tyler, Tyler's interview is a little later in our outline for our show. So we'll just skip that because we've thoroughly covered him at this point. <laughs> um, let's. Well, one more thing. You, you stopped by iTunes and you've rated his podcast five stars. Absolutely. Um, I haven't had time to do that, but I will, you know, once we're done with this. And, and I suggest everyone out there do the same. So we want to promote this, uh, get fountain pens out there, and uh, make people aware of it. I just did that today, both the Geek of the Week and the regular Fantastic. podcast. Fantastic. And I also gave Tyler's five stars, so I'm too. I'm not really sure. I have no way of knowing how many people download the podcast from iTunes because Apple doesn't provide that information. Uh, oh, that's too bad. But seeing ratings is one way we have of knowing that people are actually listening and liking uh, what we're producing, and Tyler would know the same as long as he's getting ratings. He, la well, last time I saw it, there weren't enough ratings to show an average, and r I remember when we were at that stage with our podcasts, you have to get, mm -hmm. I think, five ratings before they'll show you an average, so I'm hoping he gets there soon, because if you get to the fourth podcast and you don't have enough ratings to show an average, you're starting to think, well, who's listening? Well, we're all listening, Tyler, so keep it coming. <laughs> Let's move on. So what's going on this weekend? Well, the one of the some pen show is just wrapping up even as we speak. Yeah. Well, actually it's on the other coast, so it, people are probably drinking by now. <laughs> I'm of course referring to <laughs> Is that common at pen show? <laughs> is that common at pen show? <laughs> you were just at LA. <laughs> Seems like forever ago. <laughs> I'm referring to the Baltimore pen show. Do we know anyone who is there? Uh, uh, I do. I'll go for it, Mr. Gray. Well, Richard Bender, Lisa Anderson, Brian Anderson, um, 
Oh, geez, who else would probably be there? Um, those are the ones that I know that at least I've seen like um, on the social media where they're talking about the show. So I don't know that Baltimore is a huge show, but I've heard that the hotel is absolutely amazing, like the architecture. Oh, yes, uh, someone just said Pendleton Brown. Pendleton Brown is there as well. Right. Um, yes, everybody so, who's there yeah. is talking about that hotel's architecture. I think that's yeah, the, that's yeah. one reason to go just to see this hotel, and I do I did see uh, AndersonPens.net posted an update, uh, re- basically a recap oh. of the first two days of the show. They hadn't that, mm-hmm. last I saw they had not yet posted one for Sunday, and they probably won't uh, until they're home. But at least you can go to their website and then find the link to their blog and read about the first two days. And yeah. not so long ago, we were all at the L.A. Pen Show, and I still remember that Sunday at the end of the L.A. Pen Show thinking, I never want to go to another pen show as long as I live. And now <laughs> it's... You're, you're right, it's right Eric. If, if, they had a, if, they, if they continued the show on Monday, you'd be back out there. I know, you know you I would. would. I would, oh, absolutely. I would hang in there somehow. <laughs> and it didn't take me long to recover. I think I got home, and by Tuesday I was looking, where's the next pen show? And I really am envious of everyone who went to Baltimore this weekend. And they're probably all staying there because next weekend is another pen show. Where is it? Long, long Island. Island. How far away is that? Yeah, I get all mixed up oh, on that know. coast. Ooh. It's probably a two-minute drive, right? Sure. Mr. It's From only a few inches on the map. <laughs> From you, Eric, that's probably the longest drive you would ever take to a pen show. Long Island, you know, the New York City show for us is a pretty hefty drive. Now, keep in mind that that show hasn't hasn't run yet um, for the last two years. It, it's it's been it hasn't been running, but Long Island would be another, you know, probably I'm guessing three hours past that. So um, Long Island is also another one that's rather small. Um, Baltimore is one that we would definitely consider going to if it wasn't so close to L.A. Uh, the way that we do pen shows, we are just out. I mean, it takes a week's preparation and then two weeks reco- I'm sorry, two days recovery afterwards. And I'd love to go to Baltimore because it looks like a neat one. But I think the only way that we could make it is if we just went and walked around and didn't display. But I don't know that people would appreciate that, you know. You're here and you didn't bring your pens. Well, I have one in my pocket if you'd like to look at it. And here's my website. There you, you can go. order online. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but the question is, how far away from Baltimore is Long Island? I would guess probably six or seven oh. hours. That's just like a, a rough Certainly guess. Certainly not two minutes then. Okay. No, it's it's not it's not. I mean, I mean, if you think about it, Philly, um, like Philadelphia, Washington D.C., Baltimore, those are all in real close proximity to each other, and that's like for me, those are all like between seven and eight hour drives. They're all pretty easy for me. Uh, but then Long Island is, you know, like the other side of Manhattan, uh, and so it's a little bit a little bit um, pro- uh, prohibitive for me as far as time of to drive go. How long would it take you to drive to the UK for the Eastern Pen Show? Yeah, it would take a long time. I'd have to have an uh, amphibious car, I think. <laughs> James Bond has one of those. So you could probably borrow it. So the, the Eastern Pen Show is on uh, March 25th, right? Yes. And then just a few days later, uh, March 30th to April 1st is the Arkansas Pen and Watch Show. Um, okay. So speaking of upcoming shows, what's the next one that everyone's going to. Brian, what's the next one you guys are going to? He's going to Chicago. Chicago. I'm going to Chicago. Yeah. Mr. Smith, you're yeah, going okay. to Chicago. So we'll all be at all Chicago. Right. Yes. You guys will all, all be there? rendezvous yep. in Chicago. There should be. You think you can do a live broadcast? If they have an internet connection. Absolutely. The, the problem yep. in L.A., in the ballroom of the actual showroom, there was no internet connection. Dead air. Dead yeah, air. Not, not in the ballroom. Uh, so I'm hoping that it's a different story in Chicago. I don't remember offhand what it was with Chicago. Uh, I remember, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure that there is internet access in the ballroom and, like, outside of the ballroom. I mean, every hotel generally has, like, lobby access. And if you want to do, like, a live thing from the lobby, you can always do that. And then, you know, walk with your iPhone through the show if you wanted to try that. But I don't remember offhand what the Chicago internet connection was like in the show. No, I don't either. Uh, but I, I do know I bought a pen from you there, uh, and I used a credit card, and you used the Internet to, I think you used the Internet to uh, process the charge. So there must be something. Excellent. Yeah, there's something there. And quite honestly, these these pen shows all just kind of um, melt together for me. I can't remember <laughs> one from the next, quite honestly. So if I was processing credit cards and you remember it, then I had Internet somehow. So Yeah, you and... So, hey, I've, I've got a question about these pen shows. Okay. Can, can you find paper there? 
Oh, at at the pen shows. Yeah. Uh, depends on who's gonna who's going to I'm, attend. I'm sorry. Keep in I'm mind sorry. that uh, I got lost for a second. Did that question come from you, Mr. Smith, or from a chat? It, it came from me. You've been to pen shows. Oh, okay. Why? What's, what is that grin I, on your face? <laughs> because I'm trying to lead us into the poll oh. question, but you're blowing it for me. So, <laughs> oh <just> my god! <laughs> <laughs> reveal the results of our latest poll. Was who makes your favorite fountain pen friendly notebook or journal? Um, Yes, I missed that so, completely. Now, see, usually when we're doing a podcast, I have my telephone turned off. Uh, but this time I can't because we're expecting a phone call. And I'm getting phone calls from Mexico that I just can't take right now, sorry. Although I probably could, couldn't I? You'd all just love to see that, wouldn't you? What's our poll question, Mr. Smith? <laughs> it's who makes your favorite fountain pen friendly notebook or journal. Um, and the, the overwhelming favorite is, is Rodia at 40%. Followed by... Uh, Claire Fontaine at 22, and then 16% uh, was other. I was very surprised by the other, the number of votes for other, because we had listed Rodia, Claire Fontaine, Moleskin or Moleskine, uh, Black and Red, Quo Vadis, uh, Ex Exacompta, Piccadilly, Field Notes. I thought the, the, the number, the variety to choose from was wide. What are, the, what are these other people using that, that voted for other? Which, which one did I miss putting on that list? I don't have a clue. Maybe, hopefully, some people in the chat can help us out with that. But, uh, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, daily paper for me is Rhodia. And if I'm using something really wet or a flex nib, I'll, I'll use Claire Fontaine. But uh, what about you, Brian? I go back and forth. I, I have um, generally all of my, when I test a pen before it ships out, I'm generally using Claire Fontaine, but I also have pads of Rhodia there as well. I don't see a tremendous difference between Rhodia and Claire Fontaine. I know that they're under the same company right now, and I know that there are subtle differences, but for my purposes, you can't go wrong with either one. I find that Claire Fontaine is much smoother than Rhodia, almost like writing on glass. Yeah, yeah I, would, I would see that. I see some people in the chat are saying Levenger, um, some stuff at Staples. So Okay. No, I didn't include anything from Levenger because I just... The only good paper that Levenger offers is Rhodia paper. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, as so are we going to have a, a new question? A new week? poll question every Monday at 10 a.m. Pacific. The next question will be, let's make one up on the spot. How about who makes your favorite ink? We've gone through paper. Now we can go through ink. Um, so a lot of stuff. choices there. Well, uh, yeah, I know. We'll probably, other is probably going to win. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say for me, probably... Uh, Pilots Orochi Zuku. That's your favorite. Yeah, we've had this conversation yeah. before, and I'm looking up on my shelf there. I've got two bottles. Um, what do you like the most about it? We're going to have the same conversation again, aren't we? <laughs> Probably. Um, well, the characteristics of the ink are just really good, and I, I really like the colors. So, you know, if price isn't an option, that's what I'm going to go with. But uh, I, I don't know. It's just one of my favorites. Other than that, um, I would have to say Visconti because I really, really like the. The turquoise, um, I like their burgundy, their brown is good. I even like the black. So, And if they had the glass bottles still, they would probably be my favorite. See, it is the bottle. So oh, yeah, the bottle that has is, a that lot was a, to play a, in there. Our exact conversation the last time we talked on the air about inks was that I think the Hiroshizuki inks uh, sell more because of the bottle. I love the bottle. Well, that's, and that's one reason I'll never use J or Ban until they change the bottle, because I absolutely hate that design. Well, I have a bottle of, of Urban, because I wanted to try their, so do their I. gray, I've, but I moved the ink. I moved the ink into an inkwell, because I just couldn't... Well, you can't get any pen in that bottle to ink it, <laughs> unless you... Remember when we tried <laughs> filling your vanishing point nib in L.A. out of a J or Ban bottle? Even the vanishing point and, nib wouldn't fit in that bottle. After about two <laughs> sentences, we couldn't figure out why it was so dry. It was because there was no ink in it. And let's see if I can remember Brian Gray's ink of choice. I remember. Uh, it if he's testing pens, he's going to be using Waterman uh, and mm -hmm. Florida Blue or whatever it's called these days. Generally. Uh, but you used to be a sailor man. And I don't uh, mean you Waterman, were on the high sailor seas. And <laughs> <laughs> Waterman, Sailor, and Aurora. And actually... I know that I say that I always test my pens with Waterman Florida Blue, but I just ran out. So I think I've got to call uh, the Goulets or someone to send me some Waterman Florida they, Blue. But right now, I'm testing my pens with Aurora Blue. I like that a lot as well. Aurora Blue is oh, silky. Wonderful, wonderful ink. Are the Goulets yeah. not in the chat? Can't you just place your order right yeah, now? Yeah, they, they both are. 
Right? Yeah, they both are. Well, are they sending him 10 bottles of Florida Blue? No. Hey, uh, no, Brian, Waterman can... should actually be doing that. <laughs> yes, actually. Yeah, They're that's seriously true. dropping the ball here. All right. Yeah, Brian, Brian and Rachel, if you're listening, send me a bottle of Waterman Florida Blue, please, and uh, just put it on the invoice, Brian, all right? Don't you go through a bottle a day. No, not necessarily. Taste. Not necessarily. You're stingy with your testing, aren't you? As, <laughs> <laughs> Well, I don't completely fill the pen when I test. I usually do a dip if I need to test, like if I'm doing like something that's heavily diagnostic, I'll fill the pen. But even then, if you fill the pen, you can put a heck of a lot of, a heck of, a lot of that ink back in. Okay, just out of curiosity then, but, how long does one bottle of Waterman ink last you? Approximately. About two, about two weeks, two I weeks. would say. Oh, you're still wow. like, yeah. going through a lot more than I It's have. still pretty yeah, fast. fast. Yeah, yeah. I, I can't yeah. empty a pen in two weeks. Yeah. Well, I can empty the, the vanishing point in two weeks. I can do it in one. It doesn't hold any ink. Okay. Yeah. Keep in mind, every time, every time that I dip and, pest and, uh, dip and pest, dip and test a pen, um, I'm saturating the feed completely, you know, and then I've got to get a little bit of that out, make sure it's not oversaturated. So every time that I'm dipping, I'm, I'm taking a significant amount of ink out of the bottle. So, you know, it, I, I go through it pretty fast. Just, uh, ink testing and pen testing, that actually sounds like a job I could... Uh, like, learn to like. I've invited you guys to come up, right? You guys need to come to Ohio, and you can test all the pens and all the inks that well, you want. I've been meaning to talk to you about that, actually. <laughs> I think after Chicago, I'm, awesome. I'm just going to rent a car and go down and find you. In fact, I'll follow you. Yeah, you I'll know follow what? You down there. Honestly, I that happen at Chicago. I wasn't joking when I said that that invitation is open to you guys. If you want to visit um, after the Chicago show, just hump, just head back our way, and that'd be cool. We could do a live broadcast from here. It wouldn't have to, wouldn't have to be remote. That's true. Awesome. That's true. Mm -hmm. um, where shall we go now? I brought up the screen for. for well, I'll Tyler tell you what. Oh, let's, uh, I, if you want to, I'm sorry, Eric. If you want to go through the chat, I'll I'll give you a quick. Uh, people are mentioning inks. I've got lots of noodlers. We've got some diamine mentions. We've got more noodlers. Sailor noodlers. Uh, diamine. Um, bamboo ink. Uh, Iroshizuku. Waterman, Florida Blue. So I'm just giving you a rundown of kind of what people are saying in the chat. Does, uh, does noodlers make ink? I've heard that they do. <laughs> See, I always that. thought that was a rumor. That was a rumor. I've only, you know, I've got like four or five of their pens. They make <laughs> ink now too. <laughs> and there I'm was a quick question that I'll answer. Uh, someone asked if Edison will be at the Atlanta show. The answer is no. Sorry, it's too long of a drive for us, and 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 we haven't really arranged for a flight yet. But it's a show that we do have. Uh, plans for so not any Atlanta plans right now. Sorry, back to our schedule. Well, since you brought us there, what where, when is the Atlanta show off the top of your head? I don't well, know. You, if, I'll be if honest. You don't know it's too soon to get a flight. How can you say it's too soon to get a flight? Flight. <laughs> oh, I'm. I, I didn't. I didn't mean too soon to get a flight. Um, as far as flights go, I don't know that it's really um, a, a large enough show that we would fly to. Oh, I see. Someone in the chat saying it's the it's April fourteenth. Oh, that's right around the April fourth. So, that date sounds familiar to me for some reason. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, I brought up Do uh, Tyler Dahl's Geek of the Week uh, slide just so we could give him his fifteen seconds of fame here on the podcast. Um, mm -hmm. I think we can move on to uh, what's new at the site. The the post that you have posted this week, Mr. Smith. Yeah, um, not quite as many as I'd like, but uh, some good ones I felt. You're going to um, have to walk us through them. And the first one I want to hear about is the Aurora. Well, Aurora, they, they have a line of pens um, inspired by the seas of Italy. This latest one is made out of a green celluloid that very much reminds me of the jade found in vintage Schaefer's. It does sort of look like that, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, I would really like to see it in person just to see how closely it, it matches. Or doesn't match, but uh, the, the pen itself is gorgeous. The one thing that really catches my eye is that they have the Aurora logo on the top of the cap, something that I've not seen before, and I really wish they would start doing this more often, because on so many Aurora pens, they, they don't have their logo, let alone their name, anywhere on the pen. It's usually on the cap band, at least on mine. Well, yeah, I mean, that's about it, but I mean, if you look at the nib... The, oh, yes, the nib, we're going to talk about the nib. All you see is 14K or, or whatever, and it's... But but this pen it's it's beautiful. It's um, they did release one before this in blue celluloid, 
And this is the second pin in the collection. It uh, has an 18K nib, uh, will be a limited edition. I'm not sure how many pins are going to be made, but they'll retail at about $945. $945. Hmm. It's, it's a beautiful looking pin. I, I, am, I am looking at the photos right now, and I can tell you that's awfully close to the original Schaefer Jade, but I think I actually have some of that Schaefer Jade in my private stash of materials. And pe- I'm, I'm, I'm not, don't, don't tell anyone, <laughs> yeah, okay, that I have a private stash of materials. <laughs> but yes, I do have some of the original Schaefer Jade, and I'll say that this is awfully close, but I think, you know, of course, I'm going off of these photos, it's hard to tell without seeing it live, but I think that the original Schaefer Jade might be a little bit deeper and a little more saturated. But this is a beautiful pen. I thought it was a little deeper, too, but again, this is a photo. We have no idea idea what happened to this photo before it was presented to us uh dan yeah. if if you were to guess what i don't like about this pen what would it be the cat exactly band. just a little yeah. too garish for me yeah I, I figured it would be it's you know i, I like the width of it but i'm not a fan of this just the styling of it um which is i, I, but, I, yeah. I like silver I, my, my favorite furniture is silver furniture so it, it, oh yeah, the the trim is perfect. I mean, as far as color, it has you know it has an ink window. It's a piston filler. I mean, is I would I would really really like to see this pen in person. Are we ever going to? No, I doubt yeah. it. It's one of those, huh? Yeah. <laughs> oh, and speaking of that uh, celluloid, Brian, you need to reserve about ten <laughs> inches of that for my first Edison fountain pen. Well, when when you come over, you'll have to take a look because there's more than just the uh, than the Schaefer Jade. We're going right. to start running but tours nobody, through Milan. No, nobody heard Milan, that, right? Yeah. You know right. what? We, we actually, can... I do have... Uh, well, first of all, let, let's let's say this. If anybody wants to see the pen, that if anyone in the chat, you know, go to fpgeeks... Geeks, I'm sorry, go to fpgeeks.com and just take a look at... Uh, on the main page, you'll see the article about that so you can see what, what we're referring to if you'd like um, and just scroll down a little bit. But I will say, I do have a private stash of materials that I've been hiding and hoarding for a while and I always thought to myself you know I'll save that for a rainy day let's say that there's a month where sales aren't really where I'd like them to be then I'll take this out and I'll do like a limited edition out of the special materials but the bottom line is I've been hoarding this for two years and I have not had a rainy day thankfully so I was was gonna say when would that month come like right after the apocalypse I mean and there was well, that was, that was the thing, because one of the guys that, because, you know, I, I scope out eBay for rare stuff and cool stuff and old Ebonite and new old stock and all that type of stuff, and one guy sold me a bunch, and he said, I'll tell you what, I'll sell this to you, but the only deal is I've got to have number one when you do this limited edition. I said, yeah, sure, if you don't mind me, you know, waiting until I do it, and that was like two years ago. So. He's still waiting for number one? I know, and he's cool with it, too. He's actually a good friend. So he, he said, yeah, that's fine, no problem. And I said, if you want, I'll just go ahead and make it now. And he said, I'll oh, just wait till we do it for real. So well, that's, that's, that's all right. I got, off to- I got off topic there a little bit, guys. I can't wait to get a look yeah, at that I, stash, I, I don't know if we can continue yeah. now that we know you have a stash. <laughs> <laughs> now, hey, as a pen designer, let me ask you guys about this Aurora pen, or at least, Eric, you commented on the, on the center band or the cap band. Do you feel that it's too wide, or do you not like having – like the brand plastered across, and it's not plastered, but you do you not like having the brand put across the front. Uh, the brand is, I'm fine with the brand if it's done tastefully. I think this is too wide. Okay. Uh, it's the yeah. first thing okay. that catches my eye, and then I can't leave it. And what should yeah. be catching my eye is the material of the pen. Yeah, I've been putting some designs together that has a thicker center band, and I'm just debating whether or not I should put Edison across it. And I'm just, I just can't figure out whether I'm going to do that or not. I'll probably prototype both and figure out which I like better. You can prototype them both and send them to me. I'll give you my opinion. <laughs> I'll do that. <laughs> so the next pin that uh, just totally blew me away, and I actually bought one, was the Pelican M600 and white tortoise. Right. Now, this is not the first time it has appeared at fpgeeks.com. This is at least the third time it's appeared, but there's a reason that you posted it, and that was? Well, it's now available stateside. Right, it's now available. Um, I know for a fact that Goulet's can get them. Um, Brian has one, doesn't he? Or was he just showing us uh, one for a customer? He, he had ordered one for a customer, and he was showing it off. And the, the link that we posted to was at avalonpens.com. And yeah, I, I originally saw a picture of it next to a 400, and um, I was I was really consider considering buying the 400, but it's just a too small of a pen for me. 
and when I saw this, I, you know, I, I posted, you know, I really hope this pin is real. Um, about a week later, I found out it was. I ordered it from Germany and had it shipped two day express. Um, got it about two days before the LA pin show. Eric, you had a chance to see it. I had a chance to use um, it. Yeah, you did. It's got a, that big double broad nib in it, and uh, I absolutely love it. Um, I, you love it. Did I hear you say you love it? I what love it. What about the size? Because the size, it, it, I, it was smaller than I was expecting. Yeah, it, it is a tad smaller than I like, but uh, you know, it's it's bigger than the 400. Um, ideally, I would like it in an M800. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll pay whatever they're asking for that. I'll and... let them know. <laughs> uh, a, an interesting story. Uh, I guess I had never realized how close in size the M400 and M600 series are. Uh, we were at the LA Pen Show in the lobby with your pen, and John Modishaw was there actually chatting with uh, Greg Minuskin. And so we, we took the, your M600 over to John to show him because, you know, he sells pelicans and I didn't think he had yet seen the M600 in, in this white tortoise. And he looked at it for a full minute, just, you know, admiring it. And then he looked up and he said, is this the 600? So even John Monashaw, if the 600 is not right next to the 400, is not sure which, which size pen it is. That's how close they are. Hmm. I was shocked at that. Yeah, they really have to be side by side for you to tell. But the M1000, there's no mistaking that one. <laughs> of course not. If they ever come out with an M1000 <laughs> in this, I mean, I'll, I'll be selling children to get that pen. <laughs> well, you're going to have to sell Brian's. <laughs> <laughs> What's this thing that Sailor put out? This is a um, really, I mean, you talk about special editions and, and limited editions. This, they only order this pen on request. It's wow. the Sailor Bamboo. Kind of like my Edison pen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, <laughs> but it's, it's made from a bamboo that's obtained from the, the roof timbers of old traditional Japanese thatched roof houses. Now, what makes it special is th this bamboo is aged and colored from the smoke and heat from the fireplaces in these houses. That is amazing. Huh. And does it write? Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely it writes. It uses their 21 karat gold nibs, um, you know, their Nagahara nibs, and they're about $2,200 a Ouch. pen. Uh, how how yeah, large I, is this so, pen? Do we have any idea on its size? I, I don't have any idea on its size. I'm guessing... Um, it's it's probably a little bit larger than the M1000. Oh, you think it's that large? In other, that's yeah. Huge. I mean, it's 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 pretty massive. Yeah, massive would be a good way. It, it it looks awfully thick to me. It does. I mean, there's a huge step yeah. from the section to the barrel of the pen. All right. How do you mm -hmm. suppose they got this idea to use the bamboo from the old thatched roofs of who knows where? Because we're I, sitting here, have no our idea. special guest this week is a pen maker himself. What sort of special materials can we th dream up for special special Edison pens that can only be a, can, you can only get if you special order them? Uh, from Edison, or what is possible in general? No, no, we have <laughs> to think of a really special, strange. Well, like how odd, how would they ever come up with you know thinking of to use this material? You know as well, really, I mean, if you consider it, any material that can be machined or even just simply adhered, you know, uh, because I'm sure that what they've done here is they've probably got, I mean, from a design standpoint, they've got the section there, they've got the threads that come back, and then the bamboo itself is probably attached to, like, a piece of acrylic that, I, I, of course, I'm only guessing here. Please don't, I'm not saying this is how Sailor makes this pen, but there's probably a piece of acrylic inside there that houses the, you know, converter, and uh, I'm, I'm assuming it's a cartridge converter pen. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, and then basically that bamboo is fitted to the outside. So really anything that you can machine or adhere, you could make into a pen. Um, I remember uh, a long time ago I had, now this, this did not turn out to be a beautiful pen, but uh, a long time ago, I called on a, when I was doing pharmaceutical sales, I called on a physician who was an um, orthopedic surgeon, and he wanted me to make him a pen out of his bone cement, literally the cement that he uses to you know, fix people's hips with, right? 
So I just basically made a form and cast it into there and then attached, you know, I, I cut threads into acrylic and attached that to acrylic. And I told him it probably won't be beautiful, but he got a bone cement pen, literally. Did you take Crazy. pictures so, of that? I didn't. You know why? <laughs> because it wasn't beautiful. It's not that good looking. <laughs> it's it's exactly what he, it's exactly what he wanted. Um, but the other thing is that the bone cement um, showed some porosity and bubbles and things like that. So I basically attached it to a piece of acrylic, cut the threads in the acrylic, and then you know did the same thing with the cap. So yeah, it it, it wasn't phenomenal. Well, you know, um, but we uh, were talking about odd materials for pens, and you start you launched into a story and led up to an orthopedic surgeon. And in my mind, I thought you were going to say that he wanted it out of a bone. I didn't know where he was going to get this like, bone. Like a human, I don't know. A human femur? Something. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no. I... And it's probably true. You cleaned it up for us, didn't you? No, no, no. It was it was bone cement. He, But the thing is, though, I don't think that he was supposed to go to the hospital and rob them of their bone cement because he doesn't own it. He just, he just went to the hospital and grabbed a bunch and gave it to me. So I don't think he, it was supposed to happen that way, but... Well, the the next cool thing that we saw at the site was uh, Franklin Kristoff has announced their Model 27 in several new colors, and they're also um, have, holding a contest to win $75 for anything at their site. Right, and that, is that contest still going on? Still ongoing? Um, I'm not sure. It it might be over now. Um, I noticed they said it only you know has two weeks, and I can't remember the start date of it. So. Okay. You could try it, you know, you could email them and ask them, but uh, I, I think it might be did over. Did we see these pens in L.A.? Because <clears throat> really did. the only they pen I remember offered. is the one that you purchased. Oh, yeah. No, they, they did have these there. Um, they're a, a thin pen, slightly heavy, um, cool, very cool classic design to them, and the, the colors are just really great. Um, all Let's see, they have six different colors, and it's perfect red, racing green, Tennessee orange, Carolina blue, light gray, and an all black chrome pen. Right, but I don't think they're going to actually produce all of those colors, th unless I'm mistaken. The contest was no, to guess they, guess which color is sticking around or something like that. No, they're producing all colors. The contest was to guess which one sells the best. Oh, it's the gray one, ah. the chrome. Well, I don't know. The black. I chrome? would think it would be the black chrome, but what do I know? I picked the black chrome. <laughs> Mr. Do you guys remember? Is is this a snap cap? Um. Yes, I believe so. Okay, because because Franklin Kristoff also has some really neat designs that has a magnetic cap, and I don't think this is a magnetic cap. Um, I think that's a snap. I was just asking because I, I I saw these at the table, but I didn't get a chance to handle them and uh, check out how those caps. His go table on. was like right behind yours. How did you not find the time for that? Hey, do you know how busy I was at that show? <laughs> you weren't so busy that you couldn't sneak up on our podcast. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Well, there's a lot that escapes me at pen shows anyways. Well, you're, you're better off not going to Scott's table because he had lots of pens that were worth buying. You have Absolutely. some really cool stuff there. Yeah, and these pens, they're only fifty nine fifty. I mean, they're less than 60 bucks. Wow. Yeah, I mean, you talk about an affordable well, What kind of nibs pen. can you put in them? You can get all of those a wide Mike, selection. Mike and work nibs, anything you want. Well, now now those aren't a free upgrade. Those are only free with oh, pens yes, um, what, over that you spend a hundred dollars or more on. But uh, I think it's it's a pretty reasonable upgrade for even those. Wow. So yeah, that that's a that's a really sharp pen for sixty bucks. Amazingly yeah. sharp. That's pretty cool. How many how many people do we on a weekly basis? How many people do we make buy pens? And I don't think we started out to do that. <laughs> Actually, I do you think that should the entire pen industry give you guys a finder's fee? Is that what you're alluding to? No, no. Do I, I owe I'm you complaining money or actually because I'm buying too many pens myself. <laughs> okay, who can pronounce this next pen? Because I can't. I'll just say it right up front. I, I, I was no idea. just thinking the same thing. <laughs> it's not a burgundy. It's well, I I think it means burgundy in French. Isn't burgundy a French word? I mean. Burgundy wine comes from the Burgundy area of France. We need someone who speaks French to let us know how to say. I don't know. It looks like bourgeois to me, but it can't be a bourgeois pen. I I, I am very I'm I'm very very fluent. <laughs> Give me a second. Okay, it is. 
Borgagni. Borgagni. Okay. <laughs> we, I, I have no call idea. This the platinum 3776 century Borgagni. <laughs> Oh my God! We just butchered the pen's name, but it is gorgeous, isn't it? <laughs> it's absolutely beautiful. It's like a a deep burgundy demonstrator. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Hmm. And it's got gold trim, and this is probably one of my favorite color combinations. The the burgundy and the gold. Yeah. And I, I thought agree. the pictures were rather nice too. Uh, oh, especially they're fantastic! Like the one where with the wine glass and i guess that's all i'm going to say about it because people can go take a look um but it looks like what is the pen coming out of the wine or going into the wine i don't couldn't tell which direction i, I would like it's say going, going into. into looks like it's one with the wine one with the wine there we go there you go so uh what's the scoop on this pen limited edition well, what no, I don't think so. I think it's going to be a standard edition. Um, it's based off the Platinum 3776, so it's going to use their s new slip cap design, which is supposed to prevent the nib from drying out for like up to two years, yes. I think. I mean, just something the, their ridiculous. Their scientific evidence supports that claim, yes. And it, it'll come with a 14-carat uh, gold nib and extra fine, fine, medium, or broad widths, and it's about the same size as an Omos Paragon or a, a Sailor 1911 full size, which which is a pretty large pen and something I'm definitely um, excited to try. It's a good looking pen and a good size pen too. And uh, you said a slip cap. Uh, well, it's there. I'm sorry, it's not a slip cap. But it, it has. Cap. It does screw it has on some sort of inside cap enclosure for the nib that keeps it from drying out right <clears throat> did you mention an msrp on that um no but uh thankfully uh rachel has okay. saved the day and told us it's, it's gonna be uh 220 list price wow that's a good price this is the affordable pen week so, yeah that's, that's a heck hey, of a price by the way guys let me jump in jump here right in now here. i'm looking over the I'm looking over the chat a little bit. Um, can one of you enable URLs in the chat room? I think that people are trying to send a URL back and forth. You see, Dan, you put your URL up and it was removed. Oh, it was. I didn't um, see that. Yeah, if you can, I don't know if you, it depends on if you're a moderator. If you're a moderator, you can, you know, enable URLs. If not, um, Eric might need to do that. Dan is a moderator. <clears throat> Okay. Uh, Eric is trying not to cover up your video as he looks for these things. Uh, I, it's not. I don't. I don't know that it's a huge deal, but you guys might just just know that that came up in the chat because I think that people would like to send a URL for what they're looking at. Yeah, I can't see how to enable that at the moment. Yeah. Okay. It might. It might. It might need to be on Eric's side since he's running the broadcast. And if not, you know what? We're, There's our yes, first glitch. Right. There's our, our first glitch, first glitch. right? We're going to chalk that up. Put it on the list of things list. to do. Yes, there we go. All right. All right. Sorry about that, uh, Platinum. Um, you also found some videos. Yeah, I was, you know, sometimes I just like to be really lazy, and reading just takes too much time. <laughs> so I, I found some <laughs> awesome videos. Um, I posted them in there. One is for the the Moleskin meets Lego commercial. I saw that video. What did you think of it? I thought it was awesome. Cool. I didn't. Uh, I thought it was pretty darn good, but not quite awesome. I, th I thought they could have done just a little more there. Wow, you've got kind of a high standard, well, don't you? Have, they usually make amazing videos for Moleskin, Moleskin, uh, that, you know, just shock me that they're so amazing. And this one didn't, didn't do it for me. Eric, you must be a real connoisseur of stop animation. I thought that was stunning. <laughs> my gosh. Well, I'll send you some links of their their previous ones. You know, they, my, they my, do have my, some my, pretty my, awesome previous ones. My son Andrew and I, we did a Lego stop animation, literally, where I had my camera and it was a Saturday, so we took like an hour or two. But I'm not showing it to you now, my friend. I, I, I'd be too <laughs> no, embarrassed. No, no, no. I'm, you know, I'm, not, a, I'm not a stop it, animation snob. <laughs> I, put a, I have myself posted a stop animation of the Twisby, what was that, the Twisby uh, Diamond 540 in amber hatching from its, its, its packaging. Uh, and it was nothing compared to this moleskin video what i'm comparing this moleskin lego video to is their previous work uh 
you know, once they raised the standard and the bar so high with their previous videos, I was I was expecting something, another video that would knock my socks off. And this one was really, really good. I could never, ever do anything like this. But it left me wanting more because of their previous works. Well, you still have me way too intimidated to send you the video of our of our little Lego animation. So just forget it, pal. You're never gonna see it. No, I'm kidding. If you want, I will send it to you. My, it, it's like unlisted on YouTube. It's a neat little thing. We just had his Lego guys, and we did a little you fight. You know, we have so. to put that URL in the show notes now, don't you? It's I'll it's send in it to your you. Really well. So okay. Yes. But now, uh, if 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 URLs were enabled in the chat, I just put it there. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, uh, Pelican's video was very nice. Yeah, I thought that was really cool. So, yeah, I just went ahead and posted those in there. And I think a few other people liked them as well. Yeah, I, I liked them. And it's, I also like videos, even if I'm a little tiny bit disappointed at Moleskin, but Did anyone find the music for the Pelican video to be a little melodramatic? Well, actually, if we're going to, you know, <laughs> you know I, I wanted to go easy on Pelican since I just, you know. Was, all right, all right. It was a little long. Yeah, it was a little yeah. long for the the first comment was uh, I ended up muting the sound on the Pelican video and replacing it with Wu Tang Clan. <laughs> Much improved. <laughs> that worked well. So yeah, I'll have to try that and uh, see how it goes. Um, Showstopper, something you posted that I almost had to order. If I had known where to order you know, it, I would have. But I, I I wish I would have seen this about two weeks ago, so I could have looked for it at the pin show. But uh, the Visconti Rembrandt calligraphy set, it's, you get one pen, the Visconti Rembrandt, but then you get three nibs. You get uh, an extra fine, highly elastic nib, and you get a 1.5 millimeter stub. Then you also get a medium fine nib for, you know, just regular contemporary writing. But the whole thing is only M an MSRP of 295 Right, and what's the MSRP of a Rembrandt? Um, you know, I, I don't know. Off the I top don't of either, my head. but I think it's it's not too much less than that. Uh, I don't think this was at the LA Pen Show because certainly it would have called our names, don't you think? I I thought I would have seen it or you know noticed it something, but yeah, I yeah, well, I wish it was there. It would have been guess, really cool. Guess to we're see. gonna have to wait to Chicago. But uh, I I think Eric, you need to go ahead and order this anyway, so that we can you know put it through the awesome oh, you video. Think, do you? You think? Yeah. All right, I'll put that on my to-do list, Mr. Smith. All right, sounds good. So, how how do we uh, do for letters this week? Did we get anyone send us any more stuff? Uh, in in uh, via U.S. postal mail, we did get a letter. We got a letter this week from Daniel, and he wrote to say, in part, "Dear Dan and Eric." I can't remember the last time I wrote a fan letter, but I've been enjoying your podcast and website for long enough that it seemed time to send one. I especially liked your Geek of the Week interviews with Nathan Tardiff and Susan Wirth, both fascinating people I could have happily listened to for hours. Daniel, thank you very much for sending the letter. It, it's really fun to get handwritten letters in the mail. It was fun. To, it is still fun to get pictures of them because it's so fast, but it's I don't get a lot of letters, handwritten letters. What I get in the mail is not usually <laughs> friendly correspondence. <laughs> <laughs> so if I continue to get one of these a week, I'm just going to be on cloud nine all the time. And uh, uh, I can attest to that too. I usually get maybe one, two, or three letters uh, a month from customers, and I love I love it when people take the time to to uh, write something. But also, usually. Everybody that takes the time to do that has stunning handwriting too. So I've got a wall on my shop that is just covered with, you know, like I, I guess you could call it fan mail over the years, and the wall's getting crowded right now. But it's really neat to see some of their handwriting. It's phenomenal. You know, the, the Goulets have a wall like that too. I saw them blog about that not yeah, too long ago. I saw yeah, that picture too. I, I think uh, we need to start a wall. We would have two on our wall at the moment. <laughs> oh, hey, you got to start something. You're just getting started, yeah. And uh, last week, Ann, she wrote in and told us about this Schaefer Tuckable pen pencil set that she got from her grandfather. Um, she wrote in again. This time she sent pictures. Um, it's a beautiful pen. She says it fills nicely with water, but uh, she's going to go ahead and send it to Ron Zorn for refurbishing, you know, just to be on the safe side. And she says she can't wait to show her grandfather. And uh, she did send pictures that I'll have at the bottom of the show notes page. 
didn't have one to put here in this video. Uh, quite a lovely little tuck, tuck away. Uh, Michelle wrote, Michelle wrote to say that she will be attending the Atlanta Pen Show this year, and she wanted to know if it's okay to take an economy class pen to one of the Nibmeister's tables for some adjustment. Um, she wants to know if a Nibmeister might look at a nib on a, a 15 or even a $5 pen. Do they do work on those economy class pens? Uh, my guess is yes. Why? Why would it? Why? I'm going to say I'm going to say absolutely, absolutely why, yes. I mean, there's there's no reason. Um, I, I I think that any any nibmeister out there would agree with me that you know every pen has its place. Even a, even a five dollar or a fifteen dollar pen with a steel nib uh, certainly has you know its its place. And the other thing is that sometimes you know a five dollar pen that maybe is made from the east, uh, the quality control in the nib is not that great to begin with. Many times I'm I'm just I'm I'm not saying well she didn't she didn't mention any name in particular or any pen in particular, but if you're getting a pen for five dollars or so, the quality control on those nibs may not be great. So taking it to a nibmeister is a great idea, because in that case you may not have good tine alignment, you may not have a good uh, splay to the tines, you might need them adjusted. So yeah, I wouldn't know of any nibmeister that would honestly say, oh, you're bringing me this pen to work with? Ah, be gone! Yeah, you know, no, of course, that's not going to happen. That. No, they wouldn't do you, should, you shouldn't be timid. Yeah, you, should, you, shouldn't, you shouldn't be timid to bring a pen like that to a Nibmeister, of course and not. And she'd like to know what the average price is for a little adjustment on a Nib, and I, I'm going to say 20 bucks. Yeah, I, I can't speak. Well, if she's going to the Atlanta show, then I'm sure Mike Masuyama would be there, so I would he simply take a look like at... He like 25 um, for a complete grind, doesn't he? I... Don't recall off the top of my head. In many cases, yeah. I, I, I mean, I would just go to his website and see what his prices are there because I'm sure there's not very much um, uh, there's not very much uh, difference between what he would do at a show and at the you know his regular queue. But uh, I, I, Atlanta, I've never been there before, but I would guess that Mike Masuyama would be there. Pendleton Brown has been attending lots and lots of shows lately, so he might be there. So you definitely will have someone to help you in Atlanta. And of course, don't be afraid to bring any pen to someone um, that, uh, that, that is going to work on it for you. No, don't be afraid. In fact, they probably enjoy it. Uh, Hugh also wrote, Hugh is our idea man. He, he wrote with another great idea that we've added to our someday list, and he added to his email, I relish every replay of your L.A. Pen Show coverage, just phenomenal. And I imagine he's talking about your walkthrough, your live walkthrough of the ballroom uh, at the L.A. Pen oh, Show. Oh, it wasn't that great. Uh, it it was, was really... The quality was low, no, it was jittery. <laughs> it was just like being there, and I, I know that because I was there. It, it's like walking through the ballroom at, a, at the Pen Show. I don't know if you've seen it, Mr. Gray. Uh, I did watch that, and I actually thought it was great. I mean, obviously, you know, you guys were personally disappointed because you didn't have a connection fast enough to, you know, to uh, to stream directly from. Uh, well, I take it back. You were doing it from your iPhone, and what? How did you guys want to do it? Well, I guess I that was, was the only option, over, wasn't it? I was doing it over a 3G connection, and we would have preferred to do it over Wi-Fi so that. The That's streaming true. quality could have been a little higher, but I mean, it it worked. Well, it was it was pretty good. It was excellent. Yeah, and I, I, mean, I'm, I very I, much appreciated the the bird's eye view that you gave us. Yeah. No, I, actually, Hugh, if he was impressed by that, then just wait for the Chicago <laughs> show wait. because you know. Not to get back into the bugs, but there were bugs with the L.A. broadcast, and once these bugs, which we obviously have worked out now, or you guys have worked out now, then uh, Chicago will be even more impressive. Oh, we have to mention that. Since, since yes, you practically what? brought it up and reminded me, the only reason we are here right now doing a video broadcast at, at today is because of you, Mr. Gray. You're the one who brought this uh, entire, uh, what, solution to our attention. Uh, you you spent mm -hmm. a, a few hours with me yesterday trying to set things up and, and helping me yeah. understand this program. This Ustream Producer Pro uh, is has so many features. It's very powerful, but a, a powerful program always has lots of features. I know that once I unlock all the features in this program, I'll be able to, what, control the next mission to Mars or something. Absolutely. Um, so, yes, you deserve all the credit that, to get us on video as fa as quickly as we we always wanted to, but we just needed the push that you gave us. 
Well, thank you. And actually, if you don't mind, let me ask the people in the chat, how do you guys like this format? You know, I mean, a lot of you have seen different uh, streams and podcasts and webcasts. Uh, I wanted to figure out a way to do something that we could involve like three hosts and even take in calls and make it just like a radio show. Uh, people in the chat, how do you like this format that we're doing so far? While you two are collecting answers to that, I'm going to read what Martin wrote. Martin wrote to say... Um, that he had a good chuckle when he heard us mention Fountain Pen Radio during last week's podcast. Uh, he did a quick online search and found instructions for turning a fountain pen into a working radio. Um, I'm going. To, what? Yes, I had actually seen that. Uh, I don't know how long ago, but I, I had searched once for Fountain Pen Radio, and the very first link that comes up when you search for that is a way of putting a small transistor radio actually putting the parts for a small transistor radio into the shell of a fountain pen. Um, and I'll have a link to that in the show notes. Some people are saying I'd like some to people see are it. saying that the parts are no longer available, but they're available. They're available. You, you might have to That's search for them a little bit, but you could actually do this. Uh, we should have one. We should have one of these for <laughs> Chicago. <laughs> You, you you need you need to send the link to me because now I'm fascinated. I've got to I've got to make one now. Okay. Oh, yeah, he could put it into an Edison pen. See, I'd have to I'd have to go. sacrifice a pen. He could make one, purpose built <laughs> for this. Um, and our last email was from Juan Felipe, aka Lince, uh, who sent in a beautiful handwritten note saying that he loves our shows and waits for the podcasts every Tuesday and for the uh, the Geek of the Week interview every Friday. Uh, his handwritten note is the one I'm going to use at the bottom of this week's show notes. So thank you very much, Juan Felipe. So what are what what was the question that you put to uh, the chat room audience? Uh, just how do they like the format? Uh, people love the fact that you can add photos to the pens that you were discussing. Um, format is cool. Looks good to me. It's awesome. I like it. Um, I think some people are having connection issues here and there, but that's to be expected when you're streaming video. Um, uh, doing a great job. Ustream is a little buggy. Uh, Brian and Rachel are finding Ustream a little bit buggy. Cool to be here. I love the video format. Uh, the FP site, the FP Geek site is having trouble. Had to come directly to the Ustream site. I don't know why that would happen because it's embedded directly. Um, but, you know, a, a, as long as the three of us have our connection that's good, then I would guess that any bugginess is happening on the user's end. Just guessing. Um, um, Basically positive, with uh, with little bugs here and there that we might be able to look into to see if there's any way of improving things. I'm also recording this. I don't know if I've mentioned it yes, yet, but the audio portion of this video uh, will be used as this Tuesday's uh, FP Geeks podcast that is usually published on Tuesdays, and the yep. uh, re this this live broadcast that we're doing right now is being recorded and will remain available at Ustream until Ustream decides to get rid of it. Yeah. Um, as someone, someone mentioned the ads, and people should know, you will get an advertisement when you first get onto this. I believe the only way around that is if you yourself have like a premium Ustream account, but once you watch that ad, you're done. That's it. You won't have an ad as long as we go. So, you know, if, if you log out and log back in, you'll have to watch that ad again. But I've never found the ads to be a real pain during Ustream. It's just a way that you got, you know, you just have to deal with it when you first get in, and that's it. I'm not sure that's correct. I know you have to watch one when you first come in, but I think if the show goes on long enough, another ad will come up, and someone will have to verify yeah, I think that. it's about every half hour. Is it every half hour? Yeah. That's what seems to be going on in the chat. Okay. Okay. And unfortunately, oh, I didn't realize unfortunately, that. I don't think Ustream pauses the video for you while they show you the ad. I think you just miss that 15 to 30 seconds of the of the show. I think I think we're we're learning yeah, as we go. I think go. that's the case and that's unfortunate. But uh Well, we're but we're getting mixed signals here now. Um John Rowe just said we've been on for an hour and he hasn't seen another ad. Other people said they have seen ads. So I guess we don't know the answer right now. Mm, um strange. I'm sorry okay. about the ads. There's there's nothing. I I looked into it. There's nothing that can be done from our end of things. If you don't want the ads, you you get the privilege of paying Ustream like something like three ninety nine a month to watch uh, without ads. Um, you know, and that's probably I'm misleading you. If we paid something like five hundred dollars a month to do this, we could provide so many hours of ad free viewer time. 
uh, we're not going to do that just yet. <laughs> we would rather that you put 500 a month into fountain right. pens. Is that well, okay? Thank you very much. <laughs> so, uh, so let's let's take a trip to the FP Geeks forum, okay. shall we? Um, there was an interesting thread on there I saw. It was a Twisby 1.1 millimeter stub versus the Lamy 1.1 millimeter stub. I didn't stub. see that, and but if you're asking my opinion before you tell me what's going on in there, I'd pick Twisby. Go. Okay. Go well, the, the, the topic itself is interesting, but I kind of wanted to expand it to all factory 1.1 millimeter stubs. Oh. Which do you prefer that you've used? Well, it's not 1.1, but it's the Visconti 1.3. 1.3. I yeah, I've got I've used that and I've got to say that's an amazing it's the nib. most amazing nib that I have, a factory stub. Um I I was thinking off the top of my head that uh Monteverde 1.1 stub. I, I didn't have that. I had an extra fine. Yeah, it was I mean, it's so smooth. It's and and the black nib and I, it's just one of my favorites I definitely. I do have to say that the the Monteverde um, fine or extra fine that I had in my Invincia was one of the I, I rarely get an out of the box nib that writes really really nicely and this one did just out of the box no fuss no muss uh, so they Brian what about you any factory stubs come to mind um <laughs> Factory Stub 1.1, I don't have access to too many of them. My, uh, If you're asking me what my favorite is, it's one that I've ground myself. Rarely oh, do I course. pick up, like for my own personal collection, rarely do I pick up a a nib or a pen that I don't do something to. Right. You know, I usually have to have to do something with the nib. Every other week, right? Well, yeah, yeah. that's true. <laughs> yeah. But now, I mean, how, you know, so, sometimes, sometimes though, I, I think it's difficult to really do a comparison of factory nibs because everyone, you know, everybody has their own specific preferences as to how they want their pens to write. And so expecting, you know, something to come from the factory perfect for everybody is very difficult. And that's one of the reasons that I really think that we should, um, we should have some kind of a program where we will have a discussion about how to tune nibs. You know what I mean? Oh, it's almost... Works. Like when when I hear people say that you know every Visconti nib that I've ever tried or every Visconti nib is always going to be great right out of the box. I'm sorry, but quality control is not that good for any pen company, and everybody's opinion is different too. So even if the even if the quality control is identical with every nib coming out, which I guarantee it probably isn't, and I'm just I'm not saying Visconti. I'm saying any pen company, including me. Um, you know, if people have those skills to just kind of take their nib to where they want it to be and it doesn't take a lot of skills to do that it's something that's really important so it's it's difficult for me to say that my favorite 1.1 is made by this brand because they're all different even from the same brand you know to an extent they should all be similar but as long as they've got good quality control like almost every pen company does with the exception of like you know really really inexpensive pens that have maybe Asian nibs where admittedly the quality control there is really poor but even those I've taken a, a, a cheap Chinese nib that looked awful and the tines were going off in this direction and just by working with it you can get it back to where it should be um, so anyways I, I got off onto a little bit of a tangent there but it's difficult for me to say that this one company has the best 1.1 millimeter stub because I guarantee if I lined up 10 of those pens that are identical I'm going to find variations with all of those nibs you oh know? yeah so, the consistency I mean even between brands and, and models is is not where it should be and you know we we always talk about if you buy a pen and, and the nib's not right you know don't worry about it send it to a nib meister because if you really like that pen they can make the nib right exactly how you want and precisely. Um, you know it, it's sad that that has to to, that it has to be that way, but unfortunately, that's the way it is. And and really, if if you have a favorite pen, it it should be sent off to a nibmeister to to be adjusted exactly the way you prefer. Yeah. Or like I said, we'll have a we'll have a podcast sometime where we'll sit down and we'll discuss real simple things that people can do to adjust their nibs. The reason that this is really difficult to convey to people. It's easy to teach someone when you're there live, but you know, if I tried to write this down and write an article on how to tune nibs, 
I don't know that I could really do it a, 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 a service to everybody. I might actually do a disservice by making them more confused. But with a yeah. video format and with an interactive format like this, I think that we can probably have some type of control over this and make sure that people can, you know, the two things that you that every every fountain pen owner should know is how to properly align their tines, maybe make some adjustments on the tines, and then how to smooth it from there. If everybody knew how to do that, then the the whole hobby would just grow exponentially. I remember when I was a an absolute beginner, I had a nib that I thought was awful, and it, it, I just thought the pen was a piece of junk, right? Well, no, 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 not not at all. It's you just uh, the tines were out of alignment, and so I put them back into alignment about a year or two later when I knew how to do that and set it back up, and all of a sudden this pen was wonderful. So just trust but fans out there, we will make plans for like a nib adjusting tutorial. We'll make it interactive. Uh, we'll you know take some questions and comments, and, and I'll also take a bunch of photos, like macro photos that show what a good tine alignment is, what a bad tine alignment is. So anyways, I got off track a little bit there, but um, you guys understand what my point was. It's, it's difficult to say that this company always has the best 1.1 or the best 1.3 or the best 1.5. That's 5. not very difficult. I can say it. Watch. Visconti <laughs> has the best 1.3. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, now, uh, you, okay. you've mentioned this this podcast on, on uh, nib tuning or alignment and whatever it is the plan is. Uh, you mentioned that mm -hmm. in the podcast where you were uh, s sitting in Dan's chair. I do want you to know that I get several emails a week asking when it's going to happen. So let's well seriously let's do it because <laughs> I I've also threatened to write the article and to put it up on my blog. But honestly, like I said, if I don't do it right, people could screw up their pens more than they could you know make them better. So I think that you know I I just need to put my mind to it and make sure that. What I'm presenting is is presented well, and it's in a format where everybody can understand how and uh, how they should start manipulating their tines. You know, obviously, I'm not going to get into disassembling and and heating the feed to make this adjustment or bending feeds or something complicated. Nib alignment or tine alignment, I should say, and uh, like flow adjustment and smoothing. If if people had a grip, you know, like a good grasp on those three items, um, you know. They, they they could turn a pen collection that previously was okay into phenomenal. Okay. We're going to hold oh, you yeah. to it. Definitely. Alrighty. So uh, th there were a couple other cool uh, topics that came up. Uh, people are starting to talk about Italian pins. We created a new Italian pins sub forum, and there's a, a Visconti post and an Omos post with uh, some really good pictures. Um, actually, kind of made me drool all over myself. Is, uh, did you start that post and post the pictures? Oh. No, I did not start that. Okay, who's 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 given us great posters, uh, great great pictures of Omas? Do we know? Um, hold, if you can hold on just a second, I, I can. It's one one thousand. Uh, Peter Pin fifty three, and it looks like he's got about man ten or so different Omas wow. pens, and yeah, he's got a set of six Paragons, five vintage style, and then one modern, wow. and they're just unbelievable um, well I haven't actually seen that picture yet I'm gonna have to go take a look <laughs> but uh, it's, it's a very cool thread um, I, I posted in there I've, I've only got one Omos that uh, that Arco uh, Milord it's it's the the smaller size not the Paragon I definitely want to add a Paragon and probably a 360 is really all I'm looking well, they're, for they're having that that nice what 360 red demonstrator yeah, but um, you know, I think I, I've got to go with the white. Oh, that's one. right. I you really did, like you the did white say one. you wanted the white one. Fantastic. Um, the Vac Seven Hundred is coming, so I've heard a rumor about that. Anyway, I, I was really hoping it would be out by now. Yeah, they've pushed it back just a bit. Ask the Goulets; they should know. They should be right on top of this. Mid March. I'm saying mid March. Mid March, and so do do we have a, a winner for that? Well, pen? The February February 2012 month long non trivia contest was the giving away of a Twisby Vac 700. It the the contest has ended. The contest rules stipulate that the winner must be present to win. In other words, we announced the winner Thursday night at the website, and the winner has or had 72 hours to contact us to claim the prize. Uh, when we started this broadcast, I had not yet heard from the winner. Uh, do you have your email program open, Mr. Smith? I do. Have we heard from 
the winner of this VAC 700? I don't see anything. Okay. If, when this is over, we'll make the uh, the official. We'll make it official. Scour our emails to make sure we did not receive any email from the winner, and we'll have to announce a new winner and restart the seventy two hour clock. Um, so I'm sorry to the person who did win, but the rules were plain and simple. You have to come back here to find out who wins and claim your prize. And I'm sticking to it, aren't I, Mr. Smith? That's right. We are going to stick to it. All right. So, but in the meantime. Uh, last week we we talked about the fact that we had two Ahab executives, which are the Noodler's Black Ahab Flex Fountain Pens, to give away. We gave one away to the man who, who coined the phrase Ahab Executive. That's our very own John the Monkey. His pen is even now, as I speak, uh, speeding its way across the Atlantic from the Goulet Pen Company to John in the United Kingdom. I'm sure he'll receive it any day now. And we're going to give the, the second one away by asking people to follow us on Twitter and tweet, I want to win an Ahab executive at FP Geeks. I, I thought that the, the contest for this one would have ended before we started this broadcast, but apparently it ends tonight, 11.59 p.m. Pacific time, Sunday, which is tonight. Uh, so we can't announce the winner of the second Black Ahab until tomorrow. Well, that's all right. People listening now have a few more hours to do so. So if you haven't entered, um, definitely do so. The, the Ahab is a great pen. Uh, the black is beautiful. It's quickly become one of my favorites. I instantly filled it with Noodler's Heart of Darkness, and um, I, I really, really like it. And then, going forward... Uh, this is our first live prod broadcast, and we have a Noodler's Ahab Flex Fountain Pen to give away. This one is the Pink Tiger version, uh, which is pink and black and white and really, really looks good enough to eat. It's probably... You guys are giving away a pen tonight? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Phenomenal. All right. And, and it's probably edible. It's probably edible. Edible. Probably edible. I, mean, I, I, I think I'm sure of, it wouldn't um, do you any harm. Bubble... Bubblelicious every time I see yeah, it. Yeah, it, it's very reminiscent of Bubblelicious, which I can't find anymore, but that's a whole different subject. We'll just continue here. Um, to give this one away, we're going to need someone to call in, to call in and answer some questions in our first ever Geek Challenge game. Uh, nice. What I've got here are three questions <clears throat> that are... So wait a minute, there's there's prizes and there's callers. This is like a radio this show, is, guys. This is awesome. Uh, <laughs> There's a little banner at the bottom of our screen that says Fountain Pen Radio. Yes, we, we need a caller to call in to answer three easy questions, easy for any fountain pen geek to answer. Uh, I'm going to team the caller, whoever calls, with you, sir, Mr. Brian Gray. I will ask the question, and uh, basically, Brian, you can, you can answer the question, and then the caller will say whether or not he or she agrees with your answer. So I'll be the lifeline, or, or will this be like a Hollywood Squares thing? I, I think I have to go with Hollywood Squares, because as right, you right, know, right. we can't get a caller in this phone conversation with the three of us. I'm going to have to have someone call my cell phone, and you will be able to hear the caller, but the caller won't be able to hear you. I'm going to have to pass whatever it is you say along to the caller. But we're going to work our way gotcha. through this. This is a little technical difficulty okay. that, that we'll work through. Um, so we'll get somebody to call, and you'll help the caller win this. Uh, there are three questions. If our caller answers only one question correctly, he or she will win free access to the Fountain Pen Geeks website for an entire year, which, of course... <laughs> How exclusive is that? <laughs> that's, that's a pretty awesome prize. That's an awesome prize, prize also very, uh, very much a consolation prize. If our caller manages to answer two questions correctly, he or she will win that free access to Fountain Pen Geeks website for an entire year, plus a Fountain Pen Geeks button that can be proudly worn on the shirt or the lapel or even displayed on a book bag. And I think uh, both of you gentlemen have one of these buttons. So you know, you yeah, know what yeah, I'm talking about. Yeah, I saw about. it for the first time in L.A., and they're really awesome. And if the caller manages to win all, th uh, manages to answer correctly all three questions, he or she will walk away with both of the above prizes plus this Pink Tiger Ahab Flex Fountain Pen. Um, unfortunately, nobody can call until I give out my cell phone number, so I'm going to do that now. And while we're waiting for a call, let me get my phone. Hang on. Are you, sorry. Are you, oh, you're I'm out sorry. Your, your personal it's number. It's my business card. I don't see why I shouldn't give it out. Okay. Uh, and while we're waiting for a phone call, we'll jump into the uh, uh, recap of last week's awesome review, which was the Lamy All Star. Um, I'm going to take the first caller to my cell phone at area code nine oh nine, 
647-5056. Mr. Smith, I can't pull up this uh, review of the Lamy All-Star, but I think we both like the pen, and I, have, if I recall correctly, it was got a geek factor, geek factor of 7.2. Is that correct? 7.2, that's correct. Which is um, just slightly above... Someone from Texas is calling. We must put this on hold. <laughs> if you'll give me just a moment, I've answered the phone, and I'll have to put it on speakerphone. Hello? No, no one's going to no one's gonna prank Hello, us, right? Is, uh, I'm sorry, I didn't catch the name. Uh, JT Monks? JT, how are you this evening? I'm doing just fine. Uh, I just tuned into the show, so I think I missed quite a bit, but uh, I got in in time to catch the content here. Well, luckily for you, the entire show is being recorded and will be available almost indefinitely on Ustream. Plus, we're going to take the audio from the show and make it the usual podcast that is aired on Tuesday. Have you called in to play our game? Yes, yes. So, uh, three questions, right? We've got three questions. They're true or false. I'm going to ask one question, and we'll hear from Brian Gray, and then we'll see if you agree with his answer. The first question, since we're giving away a noodler's Ahab, I have come up with three questions that have to do with either noodlers or the Ahab itself. The first question is, true or false, the filling system of the Ahab is cartridge converter. Uh, Mr. Gray, what do you think of that? I'm going to give that a false. Mr. Gray says false. Do you agree with Mr. I Gray? I agree with that. You, because, uh, well, there is what I would call a converter on it. Uh, there's no way to put a cartridge into it. Okay, I'm going to give that to you because it is not cartridge converter. It is something else that, well, I'm going to call it a piston plunger syringe. And you can also make it into an eyedropper. So you have already won free access to FP Geek's website for an entire year. Congratulations. Shall we continue? Yay. Or would you like to bow All out? All right. <laughs> uh, let's continue. Okay. Uh, Do you you, you want to press your luck? He can't hear you, Brian, but... <laughs> He'll, oh, he'll, dang it, dang it, I'm sorry. In the replay. <laughs> question question right, number right. two, true or false, the feed on every Ahab is made of plastic. Mr. Gray. I'm going to give that a false. And Mr. Gray says false. Do you agree with Mr. Gray or do you disagree? I do agree. Mr. Smith, you have the answers. Is this correct? Um, that They are they correct. Are correct because the, the feed is not plastic. It is what? It is that ebonite. That is correct, and, and, and quite a large feed, too. Uh, I really like the feed on this pen. Do you, Mr. Smith? Oh, yeah, it's massive. I, I really like okay, it. Okay, so we are two for two then. So, so far we have free access to fpgeeks.com for one full year, and we have <laughs> a Fountain Pen Geeks button. And number three, true or false, Nath? Now, okay, wait a second, wait waiting. a second. Is, is, is he willing to risk it all? <laughs> To go for Actually, number three? I didn't throw that in as a rule, so there's no risk here. You, okay. Uh, you are right, walking right, away right. with those first two prizes, no matter the outcome of this third and last question. But this is the question that will determine <laughs> whether or not you also walk away with the Ahab Flex. Are you still here with us? JT? Okay. True or false? Nathan Tardiff, CEO of Noodlers, was born and still lives in the state of Maryland. Mr. Gray, what do you say? I think that you gave us three false statements in a row. Uh, Mr. Gray says that that is a false statement. I would have to say it's false because I, I know he still he lives in, Mar or in uh, Massachusetts. Okay, Mr. Smith, how did we do? You guys, you have won a brand new Ahab fountain pen. Mr. Smith says pen. that you have won a brand new Ahab fountain pen. Congratulations. All right. Now, um, I'm going to let you two talk amongst yourselves while I get some information from our caller. All righty. <laughs> I can't believe we have a game show on our podcast. This is the best. Seriously. Hello. So, uh, what, do we, what do we do without Eric on here? You know, I mean... Uh, Everybody can hear well, it. Now, have you had a chance to use the Ahab? I'm, I'm going to call you back as soon as the show is over. How's that sound? Brian, you, have you, you had a chance to use the Ahab? I have not. I've been, I've been waiting. Uh, I, I have... I have the um, the original Noodler's piston filler, like the first one that came out. Oh, okay. But I haven't I haven't tried the Ahab yet. I'll have to I'll have to bug the hey, Kool-Aid. Hey, you know, they're they sending send you some ink. They might as well send you an Ahab. It's it's uh, really put nice. it on his the, invoice. The size of the pen. Is, yeah, is Ra really Rachel great. and Brian, put it on my invoice, please. Send him the ex executive. <laughs> I think that's you know a, a very nice choice. 
uh, you were saying, Dan, that the the size is what really is nice. Yeah, I was I was surprised uh, at how big it was, and I really like that it's you know a, a big thick it's pen. It's a big thick, wonderful pen. I just I can't say enough good things about this economy class wonderful writer of a pen. Um, so I'm very happy that we're giving them away, and congratulations. I. I heard his name as JT. I, I'm not sure because I had my headphones on and he was talking in the cell phone. Uh, but I'm going to have to say, is, can anybody in the chat room confirm that? Yeah, I think it was okay. JT as well. Uh, so that was fun. But we were in the middle of what? Oh, the Lamy All-Star. Yeah, it's re recapping the, the awesome review of the Lamy All-Star. It, its geek factor was slightly above that of the Safari. It was. And I think the reason for that was Probably it's aluminum cap and barrel. Plus, I think you had a, a better experience with the nib. I did. I got the 1.1 stub in this one, and uh, it it just really um, took over the entire experience. Um, I, I didn't so much care for the, the section on this pen. The, the grip didn't fit me very well. But with that nib in it, uh, I just kind of forgot all about that. And it was it was a lot better experience. So that nib made you forget about the section, the grip, because the grip is just basically identical to the Safari. The shape. It is. Um, but the, so the nib just made you forget all about that. That's funny. That's funny. I I don't remember if I scored it higher in, I think probably design, because I like the aluminum more than the plastic. I don't think that the All-Star is as um, indestructible as probably the Safari is. Uh, just because it's aluminum, and if I drove the car over it, I'm sure it would not fare as well as a Safari. I'm going to have to do that as a test. Yeah, it probably wouldn't hold up to deformation quite as well. To what, sir? What what word did you throw at me? Deformation. Deformation. Yeah, to like deform it, like if you drop something on it, put a dent in it. And so you know, uh, the way you use that word meaning means that this pen is probably more susceptible to being deformed than the Safari. Correct. And Mr. Mr. Gray has this little grin on his face. <laughs> Nothing. I'm not saying anything. Well, here. sometimes, Dan, you know, he's a mechanical engineer. So he'll throw words at me, and I think I know the word. But he's using it in a sentence and in a place that I wouldn't normally use that kind of a word. So I ask for a little clarification from time to time. And this was one of those times. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Um, and don't forget, we we had one earlier today when we discussed CNO Acrylate. But I don't know that we should get into that right no, now, should we? Especially <laughs> Maybe we can... All right. We can... <laughs> Keep that for you know yeah, after show that. discussion. Oh, that was off the air conversation. Okay, moving on, anyway. moving on. Anyway, um, uh, I, I'm keeping my All Star. You know, I I really like the the ruby red color, but uh, I I don't think I'm going to hold on to mine. There's just I mean the nib was great, um, but it's just not a pen I'm crazy about so I think I'm I'll pass mine and on the the main shortcoming of this pen in your opinion is the shape of the grip correct absolutely but check the FP geeks forum because somebody in that forum was looking for uh, a, specifically a ruby red all-star uh, not so very long ago so you might have somebody who's interested in it uh, right in our own forum I'll have to do that but while I was using this pen one thing struck me at the LA Pin Show, did you see the table of the gentleman that makes the the custom barrels for the safaris? I, I saw that table. I didn't. I don't know that they were custom barrels so much as uh, were they not just painted barrels? No, they he uses um, acrylics and oh, celluloid. I didn't know that. I, I saw the table. I, I, I thought they were just painted painted lamy well, barrels. Well, what I would really like to see is for someone to do that with the sections, but just make them round. Yeah, that'd be cool. Just make normal sections now, that see. I could swap into that pen. Who do we know that pen? might be able to turn a section for a pen? Hmm. Yeah, just a nice, <laughs> round, simple, cylindrical section. Well, then who why don't you do keep your safari, your, your all-star until after Chicago, and when we visit Milan, Ohio, perhaps we can talk someone into giving it a try. That could be a whole new business. I, I will say this. I personally own a couple of All-Stars and a couple of Safaris, and I, I personally, I, I certainly respect what you're saying about the section, but I love my, all, my All-Stars and my Safaris. I think they're really neat pens. There's something to be said for, you know, relatively inexpensive pens, especially in my shop, because my good higher-end pens, 
usually don't see the light of day if they're in the shop because there's grease, there's dirt, there's, you know, my, my, uh, my desk is rarely clean. But my All-Stars, my Safaris, my Twisbees, you know, pens in those range, I think they're great. So, anyways, I like the section personally. You like the indentations? All right. Well, I do, yeah. I, I think someone could, could really make some decent money, you know, turn in custom sections for these pens because I, I would love to opt for just a, a regular section for it. I'm sure there are other people out there that would too. Well, we need to get a prototype well, keep in made mind, and I, look into that. you got to remember this though. Coming from my standpoint though, um, I know the guy who makes those barrels that you're referring to and, you know, don't forget that there could be a liability issue here. Now, obviously, that guy is doing them on a very small scale. He's not selling a heck of a lot. It's just fun, and Lamy's not going to give him any problems with that. But if I started doing that um, and doing it on a large scale, they could you know, come after me and say, hey, you're basically using our nibs and our body, and you're putting your own thing on it, and you're selling it. it it's a big oh, liability I'm, risk. I'm so. not saying sell a complete pen, but just sell a section, just sell the part, you know. Um, this is probably something that we can't solve in this podcast, but uh, I would yeah. have to agree with Dan. If you're just making a section that happens to fit into a Lamy Safari or a Lamy All-Star, no one can stop you from selling that section. Maybe they could... Well, actually, anyone can sue you for any reason whatsoever, so... <laughs> That that's why I'd stay away from it. Period. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I do get a lot of requests. There's a lot of people that that email me and say, "Hey, um, I'd love to take my Pelican nib and have you design a pen around it." And I just can't do that. You know, I mean, maybe when I was smaller and I was doing mo you know, a lot of different, uh, a lot more custom work, a lot more um, uh, type of stuff like that. I wouldn't I wouldn't have mind uh, doing that. But anymore. It's just why lose sleep at night over you know uh, a thirty dollar section you know or something along those lines. But since since we crossed this line and we're in this conversation now, what why mm -hmm. let's see so many different companies make aftermarket items for cars. Let's just pick Ford for instance. There has yeah. to be something. I've got a Ford and I can go to some aftermarket place and buy something cool for my Ford that wasn't made by Ford. Why do those people get away with that in the car business, but we're all, you know, worried about not being able to do that in the pen business? Uh, because there's a certain pen company okay. out there that loves so that, that's to push, what did that it, huh? loves to push their weight around. That's yep, what yep, did it. yep, yep. There's, I mean, I, I, I mean, there's other things that happen along those lines, but there's one in particular that I probably won't mention. But they just love to push their weight around and keep the small people. Uh, in their place and make sure that no one does anything that's even remotely similar to what they're doing. So we'll leave we'll it at leave that. It at How's that? that? But and, yeah, and yeah. Well, yeah, there is a company out there that has just basically struck fear into small gonna, companies and we don't want to play around with anything. Yeah, they're going to keep getting away with that until we strike the fear of fountain pen geeks in them. There you go. Get your legal team <laughs> yeah, after them. Right. <laughs> Mr. Smith, what else have we got? Anything? Are we wrapping up now? Yeah, I think we're about done. Well, I have to say thank you to Tyler Dahl, who was our previous Geek of the Week. I have to thank. Usually, I thank our listeners profusely, but I guess I will be thanking our viewing audience profusely this week. How's our chat room doing? Any last-minute questions? Has everybody left? Um, no, there's still a lot of people is there. We got about is there 20 a party people in chat going right on now. in there. I have to confess, we haven't done. Now, first of all, people should understand that. We have no control over the URLs right now, but we'll fix it next time. Um, uh, let me see if there's anything there that we missed. i tell you what, if anybody had a question that we missed or did not see, put it in there now, and we'll, maybe we can address that quickly. I did see someone said, who makes pens for vintage nibs? I would highly recommend Bruno Corsini. Um, he is a one-off guy and does phenomenal. I think it's brunocorsini.com. Um, very wonderful guy, personal friend of mine, and his preference is to make um, vintage uh, filling systems around vintage nibs. Like uh, I, I, he won't even look at like a, a modern nib generally. So for that for that question, I would definitely refer someone to um, to uh, Bruno Corsini. And if there's any other questions that we missed, maybe put them in here now. Otherwise, I think are we wrapping up, we guys? We are wrapping up. We are. Right. Yeah, and okay. you know, while we wait for questions to roll in, I'll just uh, list off the ways you guys can contact us um, via email at podcast at fpgeeks.com. Please give us a call and leave us a voicemail at 415-685-GEEK. That's 
You can follow us at Twitter at twitter.com slash fpgeeks. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash fpgeeks. Of course, our website, fpgeeks.com, and the forum, fpgeeks.com slash forum. Oh, and you can also send us letters at Fountain Pen Geeks, P.O. Box 499, Highland, California, 92346. So uh, did we get any questions come through the chat? Brian, could I? Could I? I'm, I'm talking to myself right now, aren't I? <laughs> Brian, could you could you make a blind cap for a Pelican M400? Um, I doubtful. Uh, you can send it to me, but I honestly am not sure how those blind caps attach to the piston mechanism. I'd be happy to take a look, and I'd have to figure out how that works. Um, but I've never disassembled a Pelican, uh, um, especially an M400. So I really don't know how that. Um, comes together. And how does the the blind cap come off your M600? Well, it there's really no blind cap. I mean, it's it's the, the turning the piston knob. knob. Right. Yes, um, and I'm not exactly certain how it's attached. Okay. I'm assuming that you would probably loosen the knob and then maybe get a wrench in there somehow. But uh, that's an assumption. It says that it twisted off. Oh, so. Um, you know what? I think my recommendation to you. Uh, would be to contact uh, a repair guy like Ron Zorn, um, Aaron Zvabik, or didn't we just talk about Tyler Dahl? And uh, sure a did. lot of those guys have the, the right connections to go through Chart Pack or through other, um, you know, Pelican distributors to perhaps help you out with a repair like that. I don't know that I'm the guy to do that, though. Uh, the busier the busier I get with Edison, the less I can take on that kind of work, quite honestly. Cool. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. Uh, no, I, I think don't think right. nothing's going up. up. So uh, that was uh, an hour and a half, and I think it went rather well. In fact, I think I'm going to say it was excellent. How's that sound? I think so too. Uh, so I'm going to say good night, and I want to remind everybody: remember, don't write like Brian Gray. Yes, and don't spill ink like Dan. And be sure you don't waste paper like Eric. Yeah, because I'm the big paper paper waster. Good night, everybody. <laughs> hey, thanks a lot. Have yeah. a good night. At fpgeeks.com would like you to know that it takes us 12 cups of coffee to wake up. Thanks for listening. But the fun doesn't have to end here, as the site is constantly brewing with new info. On behalf of Eric, Dan, and the whole production team, I'm Miguel. Good night.